Am I on? Okay. Hi, guys. My name is Alicia, and I am a grateful believer in Jesus Christ who struggles with codependency and depression. I, for those of you all who don't know me, this is your win, Women's Wednesday, um, and I am a leader in our church at the high ground. I am our hospitality director, and I am on the lead team. And you could probably find me any given Sunday doing just about a little bit of everything. Um, when I started helping lead the women's group, I felt like God was calling me to do this, but I'm scared to death, so bear with me. I'm nervous. This is the first Facebook Live post I've ever done. So I wanted to talk to you today a little bit about chains, bondage. What keeps you from having a life with Christ that you really want to have, right? So when I was going to do this, I had all these plans about all this stuff that I was going to do. And you know how funny it is. Sometimes God lets you make all your plans and then he's like, ah, I got something else in store for you. So that's kind of what happened today. And that's why this is a little bit later than what it usually is. So have you all ever been to the circus? and seen the elephants. So it's pretty wild to watch that what they can do with them, right? But have you ever driven behind the tent after the circus and noticed this elephant, this big, huge creature that's strong and bigger than, almost bigger than the tent, right? Have you ever noticed the small, flimsy fence that is holding that elephant inside. Have you ever just sat and thought about, wow, what keeps that elephant in there? I mean, they could pretty much knock that over pretty easily and run off. That's a pretty good question. Because, like I said, obviously they're strong enough just to burst right through, right? And you would think that an elephant as smart as they are, would know that there's so much stuff out there for them to do, right? But instead, they stay there inside that fence day after day, doing the same thing every day. But why? Why do they stay back there? So I kind of got to thinking about it, you know, and I thought that question could go along with sheep, right? As God's people, why would we stay where we are every day and not tear down the walls and the boundaries that we have that keep us from experiencing a life that is full? What makes us keep what keeps us from having an abundant relationship with him? You know the feeling. Okay, let me think. Let, let's let's think about it for a minute. You hear all these people who have this great walk with Christ, right? Everything is great in their life. They read their Bible every day. They're at church every Sunday. They're involved in all this stuff. But not just that. They really have a truly deep, intimate relationship with Christ. Maybe your walk, you want your walk to be that way, but it's sort of haphazard. You kind of have days where... Things are going really good, so you'll pull out your Bible and you'll read it, right? Or maybe you go to church every Sunday and you pray and you do the things that you think you're supposed to be doing as a Christian and you think is supposed to be helping you with your walk, but uh, it just doesn't seem like you're getting really that close to him. Um, so what, what keeps you from it? You know, I was thinking about that. What keeps us from it? Are you too afraid? Are you anxious? Are you... Like I said, scared. I mean, are you scared about what's out there and what God's going to ask you to do? Like do a Facebook Live post that you've never done before? Why do you remain behind that fence? So I kind of was thinking about this and I thought for myself, why do I remain behind that fence? You know, I go to church. I'm a leader in our church. I do all this stuff. And yeah, I have a relationship with Christ and I have what I think sometimes is a really good relationship with Christ. But then there are other days, like today, when things just go all wrong. And I think, wow, if my life was so great and my walk with Christ was so great, then why, why is my life going so wrong today, right? So for me, when I introduced myself earlier, I said I was a codependent. 
So what does that kind of mean? Well, I like, I'm a people pleaser, you know. Sometimes what holds me back from having the abundant life with Christ that I want to have and the abundant walk with Christ that I want to have is my need to feel loved, to feel wanted, to feel like people like me, to not have people make fun of me. And I oftentimes find myself serving people more than I serve Christ. I serve people to make myself happy when I really should be worried about what God thinks of me. He already loves me. He already thinks I'm I'm great, right? He died on the cross for me and my sins. So let's go back to that elephant. What really is holding that elephant inside that fence is a chain and two bolts. Two, that's all, two bolts and a shackle. Not the fence. It's not the it's not the fence. It's the two bolts and the shackle and the chain. That's it. And a history of staying settled for less. See, baby elephants are trained from very, very young age when they are going to be in a circus. They're put on this chain and they're taught to stay there. And they fight and they fight and they fight and they fight and they pull and they pull and they pull and they pull. And eventually they get tired of pulling and they get tired of fighting this chain. So they just learn to stay there. And after months and years of being on this chain and doing the same thing every day that's comfortable, instead of fighting the chain, they are trained to just stay there. That chain is just there. Even though they're strong enough and big enough to break through that chain. They kind of need help at this point because they're not going to do it. So we're kind of like that elephant. We are wrapped in our chains and we're struggling and struggling and struggling to get out of them because we want something different. We want something new. We want happiness, peace, joy, fulfillment. We want to not be afraid. We want to not be anxious. And we just stay there and we think that everything is great and we think that everything is fine and it's really not. Because on the outside, on the outside, we're really good at making it look like we're great and we're fine. But really on the inside, we're not getting what we need because we are not searching for the one, the one that can help us break through those chains. When we finally get to the point where the pain of staying the same becomes greater than the pain, than the perceived pain of change, that's when we will change because we don't like to change. I mean, let's face it. We don't like change. It's scary. Let me tell you, it's scary when God tells you you're going to do something and you're like, no, I don't think so, God. I think that's just me making that up. I'm really not saying that. You're not really not saying that to me. I'm just going to go about my way. And then he just keeps on and on and on and on. And you know, you know, you finally come to a point where you know. So I'm going to tell you today, guys, the only way to break those chains, to get rid of those two bolts and that shackle, is to turn to the one who can set you free from those chains. The Bible tells us in Psalms, in Psalm 146, it says, oh man, and I lost it. All right, bear with me. Psalm 146 says, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, my soul. I will praise the Lord all my life. I will sing praise to my God as long as I live. Do not put your trust in princes, in human beings who cannot save. Right there. Don't put it in things who cannot save or, or human beings who can't save. Blessed are those whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is the Lord, their God. He is the maker of heaven and earth, the sea and everything in him but remains, he remains faithful forever. He upholds the cause of the oppressed and gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets prisoners free. That right there, guys, is what I want you to know. The Lord sets prisoners free. You may have a walk with Christ, and it may be superficial. You may go to church on Sunday. You may read your Bible. But to truly, truly get rid of those chains is to put your faith and your trust in God.
He is the only one that can set you free from those. So if you'll pray with me, I'll wrap this up because it's probably been a hot mess. I'm, I hope it made some sense. So, dear God, I thank you for anyone here listening today. And I just thank you for all the blessings in life that you've given me. And I thank you for, for this day that we were able to wake up again today and see the beautiful sunshine, even though it may be really, really hot outside. And God, I just pray right now that you will wrap your arms around all of us and all of those listening and all of those that will watch later, God. Help us to um, really, truly seek what it is that is holding us in bondage, that is holding us in slavery. Whatever it is, help us to not be like circus elephants, God. Show us the way to let go. Show us the way to break free of those two bolts, that shackle and that chain. Because we want a full, rich, abundant life. We want to be able to see everything out there that you have in store for us. Yeah, it may be scary, God, but we know, we know that you are the one who sets us free. And we know that you are the one who will help us to break free of those chains. Help us to uh, go out and be in ministry this week and help us to uh, just show your light to others around us. For it's in your name that we pray. Amen. Thanks, guys. I hope it wasn't a hot mess, and I hope you really got something out of it. So go out there today and give others space to discover Jesus and show them that you are not a circus elephant.